Frank Reynolds. Good evening. Now we know the United States has passed the word to the Shah of Iran. It's time for him to leave his country. This is not being said publicly, but officials here in Washington are confirming it privately. Here's the story from diplomatic correspondent Barry Dunsmore. At the time that the Shah was meeting his new civilian government this past weekend, he was aware that the U.S. had made its decision. It was a subtle decision. It did not constitute a public disavowal of the Shah, nor in any way call for his abdication. The decision was simply to instruct U.S. Ambassador Sullivan that the next time the Shah asked for advice on whether or not to take a vacation, the advice should be, by all means, yes. This was done in the full knowledge that if the Shah leaves, he may never get back. The public signal that the U.S. had decided the Shah must go was actually given last Thursday by State Department spokesman Hotting Carter, who indicated for the first time that the basic policy of the U.S. was not the continuation of the Shah's reign. The fundamental concerns of the United States and Iran are for that country's stability, independence, and orderly political and economic evolution. The shift in U.S. policy was dictated by the belief that a civilian government will have no chance unless the Shah leaves. Behind that belief is the concern that if a civilian government cannot be formed, there will either be a right-wing military coup or the emergence of an anti-Western, highly conservative Islamic state. As of the moment, either of those is still possible. Barry Dunsmore, ABC News, the State Department. There were several developments in Iran today that indicate just how difficult it may be to restore political stability there. Peter has that story from our foreign desk in London. In Tehran tonight, Prime Minister Bakhtiar is not having an easy time forming a viable government. As we reported yesterday, a key general has refused to serve in the cabinet. And tonight we learn of more difficulty with the Prime Minister when he tries for a vote of confidence in Parliament on Thursday. ABC's Sylvia Chase reports that at least 30 MPs have already requested time to speak against the new government. It snowed in Tehran today in demonstrations against the Shah, perhaps as a result were at a much lower level. The Shah himself announced today that the royal family will turn over all its personal property to a crown-sponsored charitable foundation. That property is estimated to be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, if Iran is a nation with little control tonight, it is much tighter in Cambodia. By all accounts, the new Cambodian government, supported by Vietnam, is pretty firmly entrenched. Vietnam today became the first country to recognize the new leadership. That is not to say there is still no resistance. As ABC's Bill Redeker reports, there is still fighting near the border with Thailand. 